Round two of the FIDO World Cup started today in Tbilisi. And we're now down to 64 players. So 32 games played and there were only seven decisive results. Seemed to me that the players were playing on the whole fairly cautiously. Nevertheless, uh, seven decisive results. And, um, well, Magnus Carlsen won a really nice game, but I've decided to go with another one. I'm looking at the game between Vladimir Kramnik and Anton Demchenko. So Demchenko is Russian. He's rated 26.50, so no pushover. But let's see what uh, Kramnik did with him today. So knight f3, calm start from Vlad, and double fianchetto. So black is playing a kind of king's Indian, and there we are. We've basically got a uh, a King's Indian on the board, and it's a Fianchetto variation, but Kramnik has Fianchettoed both bishops. Now, he has done this kind of thing before. He won a really nice game at the Olympiad um, against Vocaturo in the last round, I seem to recall. Um, beautiful game. So he has some form with this particular system, but in a sense, it's a kind of anti-theory variation that Kramnik is playing. I mean, in the past, he's been an absolute King's Indian killer, but it's interesting to, to see the way he plays against it now. Um, he's playing very positionally. So here, well, a normal move would be c4, of course. But Kramnik went with a4, so that's a testing little move. He's just asking back the question, well, how? when are you going to stop this pawn? Are you going to allow me to to go all the way to a6 maybe, or are you going to stop it with a5? If you play a5, of course, then maybe white would respond with knight a3, and, and after e5 comes, you never know, that knight could land on one of these squares quite usefully. Um, so black had about a 20-minute think here and came up with rook b8, and Kramnik met that with c4. So stopping any ideas of uh, b5, of course. And now e5, so the king's Indian move comes. And this is Kramnik's idea. He likes to take this. This is the plan. And now, well, if pawn takes, then white is, is winning a pawn with knight takes. Um, you can let me just demonstrate that quickly. And there you go, white wins a pawn. Um, so knight g4. So this is a very standard way of black being able to recapture this pawn by exploiting this pin here. So Kramnik just pushes on again with his a pawn, just gaining a bit of space. Now, well, it's kind of easy with hindsight to criticise black's moves. Um, black recapture with the pawn. Um, he could have considered knight takes to improve the position of the knight on g4 and but after this I mean white is certainly better so white just plays knight c3 and can look to use the d5 square so it's yeah already black has a tricky choice he took back with the pawn and the problem with this is that Kramnik then played h3 pushing the knight back and then e4 just making that knight look a little bit silly at the side of the board. So Kramnik hasn't got the, the usual space advantage with a pawn on d5. Nevertheless, he has gained some beautiful space on the queen side, and certainly this potential hole that black can use on d4. Well, black can't use it, that's the thing. He, it's very difficult to, to get a knight in there, and white has it very well covered. So this is already a pleasant space advantage for white. So f6, so that helps the knight to come back into play. But it's not a beautiful move, really. Um, means this bishop is, isn't looking great. So b4 for Kramnik. He starts to rock forward on the queen side. And knight c3. So black is unraveling, but you can see black is very cramped here. Um, I mean, black could trade and maybe bring a knight in, but, well, there are lots of ways for white to play. I mean, this is possible to, to bring the bishop round 
um, to put some pressure on the pawn here. But anyway, black went for bishop e6, developing. Queen e2, defends the pawn, and queen c8. So black is just very cramped in this position. Queen c8, that attacks the pawn, so king h2. And the knight comes back. Rook fd1, and c6 from black, just to take away the d5 square. Bishop c1 from Kramnik. So just manoeuvring this bishop round to a better square, hitting the a pawn. And, and here, you know, this this is a um, typical situation where one person is is a bit passive. Um, his opponent has space. What do you do? Do you hit out? Do you do you just sit tight and try and absorb the pressure? It's a very difficult situation. Um, and you know, it's hard to, to give sort of hard and fast advice here. Black played f5, um, which again, with hindsight, might not be the best. Um, bishop h6 is an interesting move, just to trade off that bishop. Now, after this, and then queen e3, hits the knight, hits the pawn, the knight comes back. Now, if queen takes, then black survives because this pawn is on priest but so probably white defends this pawn um, but at least black has got rid of that poor bishop on g7 but he still has a problem of what he does with that pawn on a7 if, if b6 then the, the a file opens if a6 then the knight will come into a4 not nice does he really want to play the rook condemn the rook to passivity on a8 not very pleasant so, but anyway, bishop h6 was an alternative. Black could just trade rooks with rook d8. That's also not bad. But again, you then have a, uh, the dilemma of how you deal with the threat to the a pawn. Any case, black lashed out with the king's Indian move f5. The problem is that when black's pieces are, are you know, back here, they don't really support this push very well. Um, so there's no danger of white falling into some you know terrible attack. Bishop e3 hits that pawn, and yeah, it's a problem for black. Rook a8 just feels very passive, so black went for b6. But now the a file is open, and there are well, there are certain problems here. In fact, I think black was pinning his hopes on on this move, hoping that a move like f4 would start to open things up. Of course, you know, white has to be very careful about taking that pawn. But rook c1 is just a very calm move from Kramnik. Protecting the knight, so now, well, f4 certainly doesn't work because, I mean, this can simply be taken because the knight is now defended by the rook. And now, well, white has a couple of things. One is that he might just play b5 to gain control over the d5 square. It's also thinking perhaps about knight a4 as well. That's a possibility. And this is suddenly a very difficult position for black to play because, you know, he started to, to open things on the king side, but the queen side is now opening. And with white's space advantage and beautifully placed pieces, this is not easy for black at all. He played queen c7, but that allowed knight d5. And the knight is hitting the pawn on b6, very unpleasant, so that had to be taken. But this is a real positional uh, gain for Kramnik now. He hasn't won material, but he has won the two bishops. And the, and the position is opening beautifully, so he exchanged on f5. And although this bishop, the moment, isn't uh, doing too much, but just bear in mind, there are lots of light squares here which are potentially available for that bishop. But, well, anyway, queen b5. And the position has opened up beautifully for the rooks. The rooks stand absolutely fantastically in the centre of the board. This pawn is weak. So black continued to lash out with f4. If e4, then you can see that 
black really misses that light squared bishop because his his structure is just falling apart here. Actually, there's a nice tactic. So, you know, black could career on with f4, but watch what happens here. Knight f5. The queen comes, and now this can be taken. And now it looks as though black might be back in it, but bishop e4 is a crunching move. If that's taken, then a rook can come to the g-file and white crashes in. So, black played f4, but this doesn't have any effect at all on white's king position. This got taken, and then rook d7 powers in, and the bishop just dropped back, and actually white's king is absolutely safe here. I mean, this is... Uh, such a, a, a wonderful cluster of pawns and pieces around the king. And that black pawn just blocks out uh, black's own pieces. It's a very difficult position now for black. Now, he gave up a pawn. I mean, I think that B pawn was going anyway. And went for some activity. But actually, Kramnik is in complete control here. And now... Queen e4 is really nice centralization. So the rook is attacked. Black played queen g6, but Kramnik didn't want didn't want the good queen exchange. I mean there are lots of good moves here. White is just a pawn up. You could trade queens and push the b pawn, but for queen d5, Kramnik realizes that in fact black's king is is going to be in desperate trouble. Particularly with this rook is just completely offside. Um white, I mean this is a a picture of centralization, um, beautiful pieces. So many good moves for white in this position. Pushing the pawn is certainly not a bad idea. But instead, Kramnik found a really elegant solution. He didn't even bother with the queen side, he just went for a king side attack. h4 is a beautiful move. It takes away the g5 square from a knight, potentially and just allows the bishop to enter the attack. That light-squared bishop, I told you, is playing a starring role in the game. Hitting the knight, the knight retreats to f8. The rook steps aside, but now, of course, this pin is deadly. So knight g5 threatened, so therefore h6, and now this bishop just slides into the attack. It's coming to h5. There we go. Threat. Bishop takes knight. So knight g6. And now that got taken. Normally we wouldn't want to give up that bishop so easily, but this is uh, a winning position now. And here's the trick. If the king goes to h7, then h5 basically just overloads black completely. The queen... Um, of course, if he moves down here, then queen takes knight. And if queen f6, I believe queen e4 is mate in two. So, yeah, basically h5 just completely overloads black's position. It's, it's, I love the way everything fits together, together perfectly here. Um, so after the check, bishop f8. Knight e5, and again, black is just completely overloaded here, so nice pin here. The queen is attacked. If queen h5, then there's a nice tactic, rook takes bishop, and knight e7 check, thank you very much. Queen is gone, and otherwise, well, Kramnik's opponent uh, played rook takes bishop. Now, if queen takes, then... Black struggles on, but instead white wins immediately with another tactic. Rook takes bishop, and if, well, he resigned here. If king takes rook, then knight takes queen. Check. Wins the whole lot. Um, well, just a brilliant performance from Kramnik. So, uh, so elegant, actually. Um, and we've seen him play like this before so many times, using this beautiful space advantage. Um, and but also it's an incredibly complex game you know all the pieces are on the board uh, for a long time but Kramnik you know just has it under control has the tactics under control but strategically you know just completely outplayed his opponent so there we go the big man's on form